I've been driving since, uh, since I was about 18 or 17, actually, from New Jersey. You had to be 17. Oh, I enjoy using the car to get to where I have to go. Uh, sometimes I don't enjoy driving when it's just big traffic jams and things like that, but you, you, know, you have to do what you have to do. I have been driving for 40 years. <laughs> yeah, I'm 84 years old. I've been driving because I have to work in the operating room and work. I drive at night, anytime, 24 hours. I do have a concern with seniors who are currently driving and really shouldn't be. Uh, but there are many seniors who are very capable of driving and should continue their safe driving experience. Our 32-year-old son, Darren, was struck and killed by an 85-year-old individual who police said should not have been driving. At some point in our lives, we reach the point where we're going to have to make a decision to retire from driving just like we retired from work. Hello, I'm Ann Hall. Welcome to Mature Living, a program that features topics of interest for older adults. AARP surveys repeatedly find that the vast majority of older adults want to remain in their homes as they get older. In other words, they want to age in place. One of the most influential factors to aging in place is the ability to continue driving. We see it here in Fairfax County and in communities across the country. Suburban communities were established with the understanding that people would drive their cars to take care of day-to-day -day needs such as getting to work, shopping, medical appointments, and visiting friends and family. However, as we experience age-related changes, our ability to drive safely can become impaired. On today's show, we'll discuss safe driving for older adults, and we'll explore ways to maintain safe driving skills. In our second segment, we'll discuss transportation options for seniors when driving is no longer possible. Joining me for the first part of today's discussion are Mike Perel and Bervin Elliott. Mike is retired from the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and is now a consultant and volunteer with the Transportation Research Board and the CarFit program. Elliott is the state coordinator for the AARP Safe Driver program. Welcome to both of you, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. thank you. Mike, I understand that at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, you were responsible for managing studies on how age-related changes can affect the risk of car crashes. Tell us about that. Well, as we get older, there are three categories of uh, changes that uh, we become uh, have to deal with. Mm -hmm. One is vision, uh, another is physical changes, and the third is cognitive. So in the case of vision, uh, we can't focus close as well as we used to. We're more sensitive to glare in two ways. It, it affects how far we can see. It's, an, well, three, it's annoying and we have a harder time recovering from glare, like when you go into a, a dark movie theater from, from sunlight. Physically, we, we're not as strong as we were. Uh, we're more fragile. And cognitively, uh, our reaction times are slower. Mm -hmm. uh, we're more difficult multitasking. Do older drivers actually drive less safely than, than younger adults? So, so that's an important question to try to clarify because uh -huh. there's often um, you know, a, um, a terrible crash that gets in the news involving older drivers and mm -hmm. people say, oh, oh my gosh, you know, we've got to do something. Older drivers are a safety menace. But that's, that's a myth. The data is, is pretty clear about that. Mm. Um, it's actually good news in a number of ways for older drivers. So, First of all, it, what's interesting is older, there are more older drivers now than there were years ago. They're driving more than they used to, although uh, they drive fewer miles than younger people, but they're driving more than they, than they used to. 
But despite that increased exposure, uh, their crash record is, is, is improving. So for example, if you look at the number of crashes per population, mm -hmm. uh, it, it decreases through every age. If you look at the uh, number of crashes per mile, uh, only when drivers get to be 75-ish or so does the crash rate per mile kind of match what uh, like uh, under 24 ages are. Hmm. Um, so uh, it, it's got to keep in mind that uh, the media likes to play up these horrible crashes, but that's not necessarily the, the whole story. So what kinds of crashes are older adults usually involved in? So. Um, let me first mention kind of what they're not involved in because okay. then it'll put what they are involved in in perspective. So they're not involved in speeding. That's a younger driver's mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. They're not involved in or over involved in alcohol related crashes. Again, uh, m mostly an under 24 problem. Um, they're, they're not involved in driver distraction problems. Uh, they don't, they're not talking on their cell phones. I mean, the joke is for older drivers, their car is their mobile device, not their, their cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, but what they are getting over involved in is um, uh, intersection crashes, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, making left turns at intersections, also merging. They have difficulty uh, picking up cues that cars are approaching. Sometimes they may not uh, look carefully enough right. and they don't see the car coming. So those are kind of the two major things where they're over-involved because of some of the uh, uh, limitations on their capabilities I mentioned earlier. Right, interesting. So um, I also understand that older people don't fare as well in car crashes. Could you tell us a little bit about that? So you know, as I briefly mentioned, as we get older, we're, we're um, uh, more fragile. Right. So it's understandable that um, uh, we're going to, if we get into a crash, um, we're not going to be uh, as um, resilient in, in recovering. Mm -hmm. And uh, one piece of data that kind of illustrates that is I mentioned intersection crashes they're over involved in. Their fatality rates in intersection crashes mm -hmm. are higher than just uh, injury rates. So it su suggests that uh, when they do get into a crash, it's not necessarily because of, uh, and, and they get uh, killed, it's not necessarily because they cause the crash, but because they're less, uh, they can't um, uh, recover as well. Right, right. And so that's why one thing that has uh, helped the trend in lowering the uh, fatality rate for older drivers are some of the new uh, safety features in cars that protect them if there is a crash. Right. So I, I think it, it's probably true that there are more airbags in some cars than cup holders. And those airbags help to um, ameliorate the injuries and prevent fatalities. Uh, and some of the newer uh, airbags have sensors that detect when a crash is imminent. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about those sensors is they're used to uh, tighten the, the belts around drivers so it positions them uh, uh, more accurately mm -hmm. and uh, keeps them, re um, pulls in the slack. Right, how interesting. Elliot, tell us about the AARP's Smart Driver course and what information do you cover? Okay, uh, in the AARP Smart Driver course, it's a, a one or two day course, mm -hmm. it's uh, eight hours, and it's also offered in English and Spanish as well to help folks uh, get a refresh of all the rules and regs, regulations of the highway that they may have forgotten or are not familiar with anymore because of the new, uh, you know, new roads and uh, that are sure. prevalent now. The changes. Uh, the course does cover uh, for example, uh, how to uh, deal with aggressive drivers, uh, the impact on alcohol, medicine, uh, and your physical health uh, when you're driving, as well as how to uh, know the new laws uh, that apply uh, in your particular state. We do address the uh, state laws mm -hmm. as well. Is there a fee for the course? Yeah, there's a fee for the course. Uh, for members, it's uh, fifteen dollars. AARP members is fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. For non-members, it's uh, twenty dollars. And this is a classroom environment. And how do people find out about the program or find uh, one near them? Uh, we have a phone number that they can call as well, and they can go online uh, to the AARP uh, uh, 
online, uh, online. And organization. Is it true that AARP also offers online courses? Yeah, they offer the online course, and mm -hmm. for non-members, it's twenty one ninety five, and for AARP members, it is uh, seventeen ninety five okay. online, and it's the same impact uh, right, right. Uh, for the course. But uh, the newer generation likes maybe to do it online, but the older yeah. generation still like the interaction of the classroom sure. environment. Sure, but it's nice that you have both options. Yeah, we do have both options, yeah. and most of the uh, instructors are AARP volunteers as well. So. so do you have evidence that taking this course actually improves driving? Yes, we have evidence that uh, it improves it because uh, we've done a study with the folks that have taken the course, and uh, we indicate that uh, at least 97% uh, because they've taken the course, have changed their behavior one way or the other. Mm. One or uh, behavior that they've uh, had before that maybe was bad. Uh, they also regulate uh, their driving. Some don't drive at night if it uh, has an impact on them, or they don't take the highways. They go to back roads, which is uh, better for them, mm -hmm. and that helps. Oh, that's great. And I've heard that there is sometimes a nice insurance benefit yes. associated. Can you yes. tell us about that? Yes. Uh, in this state, uh, one of the uh, 34 states that allow a discount for taking the course. It's a safe driver course. And uh, there's range in percentage or cost or whatever, you know, what the uh, discount is, but uh, this state does offer that. But of course, you have to call your insurance company and see what, what it does and what sure, it entails. Sure. And in this state, it's every three years. If you take the course every three years, then uh, you'll be able to take advantage of the uh, discount. That's great. Mm -hmm. So I understand that AARP is also involved in a program called CarFit. Yes. Can we you tell are. us about CarFit? Yes, uh, CarFit is to uh, get the person that's driving, may have been driving all for years or whatever, get them adjusted to their car, either their new car or old car, mm -hmm. as far as the mirrors, rear view mirrors, uh, and their adjustment to the uh, steering wheel itself uh, as well. And make sure they can look out of their view, rear view mirror and that the seats are set in the proper position for them. Right, these are things that we forget about yes, over time. Yes, we do. Yes, yeah, we do. yeah. So, why do you think that that older adults should take a car fit course, and uh, and how do they find a course? Uh, once again, they can go online with the AARP, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but it's a good um, thing to have because that way you uh, become a safer driver. You can you are able to adequately see to your left or to your right and be able to engage the traffic as best right. because you're also situated properly in your seat, either right. up, down, right. side, And your whatever. mirrors are adjusted and properly mirrors, and all that. Correct. That's that's great. Yes, that's great that's for correct. all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike and Elliot, thank you so much for sharing your perspective and uh, and sharing the information that would is so helpful to older adults to make sure that older adults stay safe mm -hmm. behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you coming in today. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned to Mature Living. In our next segment, we'll continue our discussion of older adults and transportation, and we'll look at some resources for seniors who either can't drive or simply choose not to. We'll be right back. a number of options uh, for people with disabilities or seniors to get around, including FastTran and Herndon Village Network. Herndon Village Network is a nonprofit and their mission is to um, help people age in place and remain independent in their home. So their first mission is to work with NB Rides and um, recruit volunteer drivers to take people to uh, medical appointments. Even if you don't reside within the 20170 zip code, there are five other um, groups that are participating in this volunteer drivers program. Fast Train is so popular. You have to be 60 years of age or older and a resident of Fairfax County to use Fast Train. Um, it's a wonderful door-to-door -door service 
so it's really geared for people who are no longer able to take the public transportation options. Almost everyone that comes to the Herndon Senior Center loves it. They find their friends, even if they had to be encouraged by their children to try it at first. And the interesting thing is, is the transportation also becomes its own social group. You know, they, they chat, it's a social network right there on the bus. Welcome back to the second part of our exploration of safe driving and alternate travel options. With me are Nancy Lowe of the Virginia Grand Driver Program, Karen Hannigan, Director of the Aging, Disability and Caregiver Resource Line, and Jennifer Kanarek, Manager of NV Rides. Thank you for joining us today. Nancy, we'll start with you. First, tell us about the Grand Driver Program and what is it and why did the state of Virginia launch this program? Well, as many of you know, Virginia is going to be the largest senior population state next to Florida. Yeah. Um, it is an ideal location to live, and that's why it's become a retirement place. So in 2004, Department of Motor Vehicles and Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services took a federal highway safety grant and created Virginia Grand Driver which provides information and resources to seniors, caregivers, um, on the safety issues of driving and how aging actually affects driving. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you offer some sort of an online um, assessment tool that helps you determine if, a dri if a, an, an older driver is not driving safely or should be taken off the road? Is yes, right? the online mm -hmm. assessment is about 19 questions mm -hmm. and it deals with the experiences one has had while driving and once completed it's not stored online and it is not graded so once you've completed it as honestly as possible you can assess what areas are lacking and go seek help. It could be as simple as, you know, adjusting your mirrors properly and learning how to do that, taking a refresher course. It could be going to a doctor and checking out your vision or some, you know, health. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very helpful, very mm -hmm. interesting. Nancy, what if, if someone has a loved one or a family member or a, a, a neighbor who is a senior and, and appears to be driving un, in an unsafe manner? Is there a way that that person can be reported? Yes, um, there is. Um, DMV would intervene if someone were to fill out a Med 3 form, and that would actually start the process of the medical review. Now, by reporting and filling out this form, they don't automatically get their license suspended, but a team of healthcare professionals will look at that case and determine whether they need additional testing. It could be a vision test, it could be a doctor's um, certification, mm -hmm. it could be a comprehensive driver assessment. So that way it alerts DMV. It's not dependent on that family member or um, the healthcare provider. Um, and also it can be reported confidentially if you are a family member or a health care provider. Otherwise, if you're a neighbor, if you are a concerned citizen, if you're a coworker, they have the right to disclose that information to that senior if they ask. Sometimes an older adult's friends or family member will notice changes in their loved one's driving. And this can sometimes happen before the driver, him or herself, recognizes there's a problem. Um, what advice do you have for people who need to have a sensitive conversation with that older driver? Right. Um, actually, seniors self-regulate their driving more than we realize. Hmm. They will not drive at night because their vision is limited to, to um, light. Um, they won't drive in bad weather. They won't drive in heavy traffic. So seniors will self-regulate and they're pretty safe on the road. 
The reason why they don't stop driving and continue to drive is because they don't know about alternative transportations oh, on right. where they need to go mm -hmm. and um, they don't want to burden family members and friends for rides so they don't disrupt their weekly activities. So there are a listing on our website, granddriver.net. Mm -hmm. There's also, um, you know, the Area Agency on Agings, which provide a lot of different transportation resources out there. Also, be sensitive, be supportive, and be constructive on talking to that senior. Um, take a ride with them. See what their weaknesses are, and then help that way. Um, they can either look up on the internet different refresher courses that mm -hmm. they can take and suggest that, suggest exercising more because that will increase stamina, that will increase balance, um, and just pre-plan. That's the most important thing is to pre-plan driving retirement. If you were to give up the key tomorrow, we wouldn't know where to go yeah. to get to right our grocery store to get to our doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. However, you can pre-plan who's going to take you to church, who's going to take you to the hairdresser, and then they have peace of mind of their transportation needs. Very good. Good to know. So Karen, after you've had this very sensitive conversation with the older adult about hanging up the car keys, what next? Well, what you would want to do next is create a transportation plan for them, maybe even in advance of the conversation you've had. Mm -hmm. So the resources that are available in this county and in all of Northern Virginia usually are not known to families or older adults. And it would be a good idea, maybe even prior to the conversation, that sensitive conversation, to find out what does exist out there. Mm -hmm. And there's good news and there's more good news. And that is that we are very resource rich um, in Northern Virginia and in Fairfax in particular. And you have a whole world to learn about regarding transportation, a whole different vocabulary in which you can help the older adult or the older adult can help themselves figure out how to remain active. In, in this country, independence is very important. If you take away those car keys, uh, my concern as a social worker and my team's concern is depression. Mm -hmm. And we want to keep an extrovert remaining an extrovert, a moderate person doing their moderate activities, and an introvert might be a little different. So knowing the, the older adult that is your family member or friend and what they need to do and keep doing so that their lives are outside of just their own homes is very important to create that plan. Right, and it's part of the plan. So tell us about the Aging Disability and Caregiver Resource Line. How okay. does that work? Who answers the phone and, and what can people expect when they call? So what we have here in Fairfax is in the Area Agency on Aging. We're housed in the Area Agency on Aging. Mm -hmm. But we do work with people 18 and above, so those with disabilities are very much welcome to call our number. The majority of our uh, touch points are th is through a phone call and they call 703-324-7948. We have staff available from 8 to 430 mm -hmm. every day. It's their six social workers. They're all MSW level, so masters of social work. They've all been out in the field. They've experienced the transportation difficulties that older adults have had. So you're going to be getting an experienced social worker, not an administrative person, who can walk you through this myriad of um, services that may be available to the older adult to keep them active in the community. Excellent. So there are a number of transportation options for people who don't drive or just you know, have given up driving. Can you discuss a few of those with us? Yes, there are. And uh, first of all, maybe the vocabulary involved. There are some that are for public transportation for anyone. There are others that are on demand, and mm -hmm. so that will be more that you schedule those. There are some that are for profit. There are some that are not for profit. There are some that are volunteer based. Um, when you're looking for transportation, we will help guide you once you call this, the 324-7948 number. Um, we will help guide you as to where you are in the county. There are different services available within our different regions. And you will learn that uh, there are some services that are curb to curb, which means roadside to roadside. There are others that are door to door, which means you will get from the one door to the next. And then there's door through door. And that, that last one may involve uh, someone helping you carry the packages, opening a door for you, verbal guidance, 
physical assistance as well as, as staying with someone. So we have all different levels, mm -hmm. all different price points. There's going to be qualifications and guidelines and restrictions around each of those, which are too numerous to go into now, but right, can right. certainly be discussed um, by calling that phone number or even looking at our website. If you Google Fairfax County Older Adults and look on our left-hand side, you'll see transportation and you can click on that and find a lot. Very good. Thank you, Karen. Jennifer. I understand that there's an informal network of community organizations that offer volunteer driver assistance in the county. Can you tell us about that, please? Yes. Um, so there are a number of organizations throughout the county that run volunteer transportation programs. Mm -hmm. And what Envy Rides is doing is connecting these uh, organizations together. And we are a service organization, really, for these community-based organizations who are providing volunteer transportation or who would like to start providing volunteer transportation. And so, you know, Karen spoke a little bit about the volunteer transportation option. It's definitely a resource for those who don't meet this, the, the income eligibility or, or some of the disability eligibility guidelines through the county. Mm -hmm. um, they can then be referred to an organization that provides volunteer transportation as an option. Where do the driver, the volunteer drivers take people? The volunteer drivers take people primarily to medical appointments and mm -hmm. to the grocery store, um, hairdressing. Uh, there are some organizations that Envy Rides work with that do do social visiting as part of their rides. However, it's not um, that common. Part of the goal of Envy Rides is to increase capacity for the organizations that do volunteer transportation so that, you know, our, that clients can get to places other than just medical appointments or to the grocery store. So social visiting, church visits, mm -hmm. um, programs at a community center. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a goal of the program. Right. Very interesting. So what kinds of driver screenings do you conduct? So the organizations that, uh, to, that administer volunteer transportation programs through mm -hmm. NV Rides um, do a criminal and a DMV background check on all volunteer drivers. NV Rides, as a service to the organization, pays for all of the volunteer background checks. Mm -hmm. If someone's looking for a ride from a volunteer driver, who do they call? Um, they would call the organization that's operating a volunteer driving program in their area. If they don't know who that organization is, they can call NB Rides mm -hmm. at 703-537-3071 and we'll find out where they live and we'll find out if there's a volunteer transportation option for them in their area. So Jennifer, how can someone become a volunteer driver? How does that work? If somebody is interested in becoming a volunteer driver, they can call NV Rides, we'll find out where they live and we'll refer them on to a service provider, somebody who coordinates rides in their community and they can go through the process with that organization. They will um, have a volunteer application that they would need to fill out. They would have to go through the screening process and they would be you know, ready to drive within a couple of days of them calling the organization. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Nancy, Karen, and Jennifer, for joining us today and sharing all these wonderful alternative transportation options for seniors who either can't drive or for one reason or another choose not to. And thank you for watching this edition of Mature Living. I'm Ann Hall. We'll see you next time.